Spring is a season of growth and new life, but in its early days, so much of that growth happens underground, where it can't always be seen. The world is all mud and no flowers. It can be a struggle to find inspiration with all the dull browns and grays that surround you. What I love about gardening is that I feel like I'm actively working to bring color back to the world. I'm pushing through that last dreary bit of winter like a sprout erupting from the soil. It can be frustrating because Canadian winters tend to stick around well into the spring. This year, in what I have to assume was an omen, one of the country's groundhogs died, rather than to predict an early spring. I got a little nervous. What if spring never comes? What if it's never warm again and the darkness lasts forever? But of course, spring came like it does every year. One day it's blazing hot, and the next it's snowing. Here on the wrong side of the tracks, we don't get much consistent natural light. That makes starting plants from seeds a little tricky. So a couple years ago, at the height of the pandemic, I got the best birthday present ever. Brad built me my own little greenhouse. It's nothing fancy, a wood frame and plastic sheeting, but it's become my sanctuary. It's held up pretty well over the past two winters, with some minor squirrel and opossum related damage that we've had to repair. Even before it's time to start my seeds, I love to come sit in my greenhouse. It's only slightly warmer than outside sometimes, especially when there's no sun, but it's still a lovely place to sit, particularly when it's raining. It's a great place to think and write, and I recently upgraded my cinder block seat with a luxurious foam pad. Even though the walls are transparent, you become virtually invisible to all the creatures outside. Gardening doesn't have to be an expensive hobby at all. You can get most of the tools that you need, either from the dollar store or Amazon, and people are always throwing away pots and planters. You really only need to buy soil. This year, most of my seeds were foraged. A local park announced a free seed day last fall. I gathered lots of different flower seeds, but I was unprepared and didn't think to label anything properly so it will be a fun surprise in the summer. However, I did gather some whole flowers with the seeds, but I only know them by color. I'm most looking forward to some giant marigolds for a pop of color. I really love the experimental nature of gardening, especially since I don't really know what I'm doing. What I have learned was mostly by trial and error. I also love the power of deciding what plants stay and what is discarded as a weed. Some overlooked plants are actually quite useful. For example, if you live in a rougher neighborhood, a well-placed prickly plant can discourage and punish trespassers. I actually consider myself less of a gardener in the traditional sense and more of a curator of weeds. I like to take weeds from my lawn and garden to see how big they can get. Shamrocks, for example, make a lovely free filler that does great in shady spots, but they can also get so big that it's almost like a shrub with cute little yellow pom-pom flowers. Another more recent of my favorites is wild bergamot, or bee balm. I planted some last year in my butterfly garden, and it really spread around. I'm transplanting some while they're small. 
The leaves smell like a London fog latte, and it's an edible plant. You can make a tea out of it. The flowers are lovely as well. Bee balm is a native plant, and it's drought resistant. The most important plant in my garden, however, is my milkweed patch. I wish I could just replace my whole lawn with it. This plant is crucial for my butterflies, especially for my monarch butterfly rescue operation, which I try to expand a bit every year. Milkweed seeds are easy to collect from pods that split open, and you can either plant them in spring or in the fall. I like to release some into the wind as well, just to spread it around. It hasn't started coming up outside the greenhouse yet though. A little bit of color and hope comes from my bleeding heart plant. Last year it didn't flower because it got crunched when someone hopped our fence. But it looks great this year, and it's a little early as well. My garden might not be featured in any magazines, but it's really been my oasis. Seeing things sprout up, imagining what will bloom and grow, really chases away the last of that winter darkness. I can see the first tentative hints of what will soon hopefully be bursts of color. The muddy spring world might not be as bright and saturated as it is in the summer, and you might have to get really close to the ground to see it, but it is teeming with life. I recommend gardening to everyone. Even if you just take a weed from a parking lot and stick it in a pot, the bees and butterflies will thank you. I hope that you're coming out of this April feeling hopeful and full of possibilities, maybe even inspired to grow something of your own. I hope to keep documenting my little garden, and I'm looking forward to sharing that process. Happy spring, and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>